Okay, folks, welcome back. I appreciate your patience. I know I said in my community tab on my YouTube channel that I was going to post a video on Thursday evening. But I am a family man, so family first. So I just wanted to share my appreciation for that. Not that anyone should really give me a hard time because I'm not obligated to do this, but nonetheless, this is a consolation video for missing yesterday. And shout out to the mentorship. Yesterday, the Aussie dollar outline that I gave you uh, panned out pretty handsomely, didn't it? All right, so you're a dollar. And we're looking at a five-minute chart. So how I could draw a contrast between intraday swing trading and day trading. And that of scalping. Okay, because there are three different things but they're basically lumped in the category of day trading. Okay, so you have day trading, which is basically trading the anticipated major swing for that particular day, All right? So in a perfect world, it would be something like buying down here and holding for a run up to this level here. That is a day trade, All right? There are smaller swings inside this day where you could trade short here and cover here or go long here and exit here or go long here and exit here going short here and covering here now you may look at this and say there's no way that you would take those types of trades but if you were scalping that's what an intraday scalper would do now there are intraday swings where you don't catch this move, but you buy this one and you ride it up to this level. Or you buy this level here and you ride up to there. Okay, that's an intraday swing. There's the three contrasting views, but all lumped in the category of day trading, or at least the way I teach it. And you may look at this as it's all scalps. And there's really no argument here. I'm not trying to say one person's definition if you will of how you're operating within a daily range is a scalp or intraday swing or day trade because they're all day trading if you're getting in and out the same day that's day trading okay no matter how you slice it it's a day trade if you hold over into the next day that's clearly a short-term trader anything longer than a week to two weeks is in my opinion a swing trade Okay, so anything beyond two weeks up to a month, then you're a position trader. And it's just simply too long for me. So I put that out there so that way you can look at the ideas of working within a individual daily range. Now inside that same daily range, if you thought that this move was going to occur from here to here, you can be a counter trend trader inside the same daily range and you've seen examples of that on my youtube channel working with a one minute chart going short here covering just below this low here going short here covering below this low here going short here covering below this low here and not so much in here this is consolidation but you could have looked at this level here as a short and made an attempt to get below these lows here and this was a rather tight range going into the close of today as I was operating in. So you'll see that. But I want you to think about that and look at this price action and the fractal that's being shown here. Now again, this is a five minute chart. This may not be your cup of tea. It may not be your time frame. It may be something you never aspire to do. But everything that's being shown here in this five minute chart forms and pans out on an hourly chart, a four hour chart, an eight hour chart, a daily chart, a weekly chart. It's the same thing, it's price. But where is your comfort? Where's the comfort level for you as a trader trading in that duration? Because if getting in and out the same day is completely alien to you, you just can't do it, you can't find the the nimbleness to be able to do that then you have to trade at a higher time frame 
what higher time frame that's what you need to determine as a trader you have to figure that out for yourself because no mentor no educator no teacher can efficiently and optimally push any individual especially all of their students into one mold and that's why i don't teach that way i give the students a broad range of tools to choose from it's the same element that we use in all time frames but the way i teach you can take that information and plug it into any time frame and it'll work the same way it just requires a little bit more time for the trades to pan out when they're higher time frame i like a lot of setups i like a lot of opportunity and i like to be able to show how to practice with intraday charts so it's kind of like a perfect scenario for me to operate as a mentor using lower time frame charts even for those that are not equipped psychologically or personality wise to sign up to that type of trading and i'm always making reference to that in my lessons and my teachings that even if you don't like this kind of trading forget that it says five minutes up here okay just forget that this could be just the same as a hourly chart or a daily chart it doesn't make a difference it's the same signatures and price repeating on all time frames okay so if we can look at price like this and suddenly when you anticipate price swings you can see a myriad of different opportunities existing in the same trading day so any one of these could be a trading opportunity that fits your specific criteria and even though you may not get the low or buy this one buying here and riding it up to here that's a winning setup and that may be the only thing that you see that your eye jumps to and you don't really see this or this as a buy and there's nothing wrong with that there's absolutely nothing wrong with that some of my students see things like this okay and they say well i took a trade like here and i got out above this old high and i felt good about it but then it ran down and then gave another opportunity and ran up to here and i feel so demoralized because i missed that bigger move why should you feel demoralized because what you're saying when you do that is that you think that you should catch every swing in the marketplace given that same mentality why aren't you upset that you didn't take the trades in the pound yen or the euro yen or the dollar swiss how about the uh, dollar cad why didn't you take those trades too you see how fast it becomes absurd to, th to think that way but when you focus on one pair and you warm up to it like i teach trying not to have a whole lot of different pairs it can trick you into thinking especially if you're new your infancy as a developing student will trick you into thinking that you should have seen all of those swings and you have to give yourself time to warm up to one specific setup and it's the one that first starts making itself available to you in your study or when you're watching price action that one particular setup that you see easily that you're not foreseeing you're not hunting for it just jumps off of the chart you're going to discover that that is your bread and butter setup and if you resist that or if you try to look for something else because you've heard me say i like this particular setup and you think okay well michael's my mentor and he does well and he can do this repeatedly therefore this must be the real silver bullet setup and i'm only going to focus on that one when all of my setups and all of my concepts are the same <laughs> they're they're mine I, I i i like them all but i just like going to specific ones because it's like my cologne collection didn't think i'd come off with something like that did you <laughs> I got hundreds of bottles of cologne okay so i'm like a frag head um there are bottles that i call on multiple times in a week and they're just called dumb reaches where you just don't think about it you just know it smells good it's mass appealing and you just don't want to think about it because when you have that many selections it's a little bit nerve-wracking especially with ocd but there are certain bottles that i go to and i just say okay well i'll just grab this and i'm out the door and these specific setups are ones that i don't even look for they just leap off at the chart but i know how to find all the other ones but you as a developing student you're on this youtube channel and you're watching for certain things the optimal trade entry is the flagship here okay i've introduced some other things like breakers and order blocks and such but the main real flagship is the optimal trade entry and specific times of the day where they form 
that may not be what you gravitate to. You may find other things in my teachings and if eventually move into my mentorship, you'll find there's other setups. There's a myriad of different setups and I've been introducing how certain patterns can overlap with one another and still give you a unique model. Not that in a unique sense that you aren't exposed to it here in this channel or my lessons, but it's unique in the scope that you probably didn't think about pairing these two patterns like the breaker and optimal trade entry together within a order flow context. So if you're bullish and you put a bullish breaker and a bullish optimal trade entry together, it's pretty strong, but you might not like that pattern either. So that's why I opened the books to everything in terms of short-term trading setups and you can apply them to any time frame and make it uniquely yours. And it's the one that jumps off the chart and don't be in a rush for that to happen for you because that, that epiphany, that thing that snaps and aha, that I know what I'm looking for. It happens for everyone differently in terms of how much time it takes. Sometimes it takes years. And if you're not willing to submit to the work to get to that point, you're going to learn a lot of lessons before you get that one favorite setup. It doesn't mean if you don't have your favorite setup mastered that you can't see setups or participate. It just means that you haven't found your niche, your one setup that just constantly is your easy bread and butter setup. Every single day you go into the charts on a lower time frame, you'll find it. But if you give it enough time, you'll get there. And then when you have a strong track record of back testing, forward testing, what's forward testing, watching price action live with no real intent of taking a live trade. You're just watching price and you're teaching yourself to read the tape, watching what it's doing, anticipating what its next price move will be. That's one of the strongest forms of study there is because you're not thinking about profits. You're not thinking about if your stop's going to get hit. You're not thinking about what area should I scale out at. You're just reading the tape. Where is it reaching for? And if you do that, even if you don't have the access to watch live price action, you should at least try to find a way to record live data. And if you come home from work later on or whatever, or if you're a student, you're in school, watch that playback and just sit there and watch the chart and put it in real time or speed it up a little bit if you want. But nonetheless, it's going to teach you lessons that you can't learn from watching my videos or watching or studying old data that's static. You need to see it painting real time and recording it, even though it's hindsight data, it's the same as if you were there at the time. And that's powerful. That is extremely powerful. Don't discount that. Because by doing that, you will find your bread and butter setup, that one particular setup that you can take and put it in any time frame and it repeats and the results are like gangbusters. It's, it's just, it's hard to articulate what it is, except for just think of if the pattern was the optimal trade entry for you. If your OTE is the setup that you have always been looking for and it makes sense to you and you could care less about breakers, you could care less about mitigation blocks, you could care less about other order blocks, you just like the optimal trade entry, it's easy, you know what you're looking for, then there it is. Don't tinker with it. Don't try to make it better. Don't try to you know add something to it so it feels like you've created some kind of new hybrid. It's just a simple little thing and you milk it. You go in there and you look for it every single week. And you learned in this channel the times of the day and the days of the week where that is likely to occur. And you don't try to put too many more moving parts on it. You don't need to look at optimal trade entry plus commitment of traders. <laughs> you don't need to look at optimal trade entry plus what's the bond market doing? Those things can assist, yes, but they don't need to be form fitted in every single setup. And that's one of the things that traders coming to this channel, they see all these different things and they're like, whoa, they're inundated with, man, this guy's got so many things. How could I possibly know which one to choose to make a, a system or a model out of? And none of my models have a thousand different moving parts. The concepts are out there for you to take them and plug them into your own unique model. And it's like a Frankenstein experiment because I can have thousands and thousands of students 
all have a bullish or bearish model and they'll look at specific components that I teach and they'll use them in a varying approach that I understand as their teacher and other students, if they were sharing it with them, they would say, oh, that's really neat how you did that. And it's something unique to them that makes sense to them on one specific time frame, looking for a specific criteria that they've learned in my lessons, but that's their model. They don't do anything else, but just that. And if it doesn't form, guess what? They're not taking a trade. That is maturity. That's focus. That is dialed in. Okay. Whenever you hear me say we're dialed in, that means we know what we're looking for. We know the direction and we know what we're waiting for in terms of a setup and we know where it's likely to go. So it's done. And everything looks like precision, hindsight, perfection to everyone on the outside looking in. But these setups here, okay, there's five setups in this fractal that are very, very easy to see, or they should be easy to see if you've been with me for a number of years, because you can see all those things. If I take them off and go back to just looking at the, the price action, I'll make a couple comments about it and then wrap this video up clearly you can see this is a London session low and the low forms at 2 45 and 3 o'clock in the morning well you know that's the heart of London open makes the low of the day with a Judas swing rallies up breaking market structure trades back down into a breaker bullish breaker rallies again small little retracement back in rallies again breaks this high and then collapses hard to take out sell stops resting just below here so no one that is using a very very tight sell stop trailing on longs can participate once this is rated there and then the real move with the most dynamic price action occurs running into this area here price breaks this short-term low there's your intraday break in market structure. It's Friday. It's not likely to continue with a really explosive move higher. So if there's a break in market structure and it's Friday, it's probably made its run here. The market rallies back up, last up close candle, bearish order block and optimal trade entry. There's blending of two patterns, bearish order block, optimal trade entry with a break in market structure. That's a model. By itself, that's a model. What do you aim for? Well, you can aim for the swing low here. And if it got really excited, you can probably see if it can go down below here. But it's Friday, so you have to be willing to take it early and may not get down to this level. As you can clearly see, it didn't. Now, I already know some of you are like, oh, this guy's talking about hindsight. Psh, if you're so smart, you would have traded it. Where's your trade? Why don't you push the button? <laughs> I'm asking why all these other guys on YouTube aren't pushing the button. I mean, you see them using TradingView. I mean, everything on the side over here and over here on this side, you recognize it as TradingView. And there's a lot of them out there saying, yeah, I'm going to start doing my live trading on YouTube. And I'm waiting. There's like six or seven of them. And they have a lot of followers. And I ain't seen one, one execution. There's a lot of talk about what took place, like what you've been hearing me do here. But I'm going to show you that I saw this coming, I watched it, and when the price was trading right up on this candle here, I went short. I'm a little disappointed in myself because I could have gotten in on this candle here if I just would have just pumped the brakes. But I wanted to get into the trade, but I was multitasking, so I knew I wanted to get in, it was close enough, but usually you see me, I get like the candle that makes the swing high. That's what I pride myself on. That's the precision I like using. But I actually got out here on this low candle. And you'll see it in a second. But uh, the idea was I was looking for a run below here. And I was wanting to see it break down. And I thought for sure once it created this one, as you'll see in the end of this video, because it's a sped up recording of me actually taking the trade. It's a paper trade for all these guys out that like to say, oh, it's just a demo, right? Because I'm not licensed to give trade advice. And we're only talking about paper trades. So paper trades are not the same as live trading. You cannot lose money with a paper trade. You cannot make money with 
a paper trade. So therefore, I can't get slapped around by the watchdogs, CFTC, all that stuff. That's why I do it. Okay. So if I wanted to be a trade advisor, I could go out there and get my series three and three series seven license and talk about stocks and commodities. But to do so, I have to give them all of the information I use to make my decisions. And guess what? I got too much stuff to turn in. <laughs> so if they're interested, they can find me on YouTube. I'm right here. And it's all done in this framework. There's no private executions in my mentorship. Any example I show is always shown on this YouTube channel. It used to be always shown on my Twitter account, but I don't have Twitter anymore. So nonetheless, when it formed this high in here, I stated that we would sweep these lows in here, that this was likely to, to run lower. And I'm not worried about this not getting taken. What I was concerned about if it was going to get below here because it was getting late in the day. And on a Friday, it's just not a lot of excitement coming in post London close on a Friday. It just isn't likely to occur. So I had to wait all this out. And then I moved my limit order up just to take an even 20 pips where I had initially had 30 pips as my target from my entry on this candle here. I just knew at that time I wasn't going to get the 30 pips. So I'll take 20 and be happy with it. And placement in here and getting out at this very candle here for exactly 20 pips, that's good enough for a precision example for this week. And again, mentorship saw 55, 60 pips short on Aussie dollar that was explained last night or Wednesday night going into Thursday uh, for its employment number using the things that I teach there. So I like to share this publicly with you all. It's not to show off. Okay. It's just, I'm trying to inspire all these other young people educators out there that drive around in all these really fancy cars which are beautiful by the way i wish they owned them uh, the approach to saying they took a trade if they could just do it here you know i, I think it would resonate more with the community but just it, we're past all that i took a trade i took a trade i took a trade and you, you see i'm fumbling on i think it was over here where i got in i think i got in over here i can tell you exactly where i got in i got in right here on this candle here right there because it was running up into these candles here. That was the bear shoulder block. And I knew it was forming an optimal trade entry. That was the basis of why I was going short. And I got out down here because it was running out of time. <laughs> I wanted 30 pips. Then it was like 22 something or 23 pips or most. Um, and it just wouldn't wouldn't get down there for me. So I had to adjust my limit order. I'm not widening my stop. You'll see me adjust my stop. My, my stop reduces and never expands and opens and, and takes on more risk. But my limit orders, my targets, then I'm okay with moving that around. If I think I've made an error in my judgment, <gasps> what did he just say? Did ICT say that he just admitted that he gets it wrong sometimes? Of course I do. Come on. But if I'm in a trade and I think I've done something wrong in terms of my expectations or how far it may go, or something evolving in the in the price action changes my mind about it. I'm no longer as bullish or as bearish. I might just say, okay, just give me a, a straight 40 or straight 50 or straight, in this case, 20 pips, where initially I was looking for 30. So you have to be flexible, especially if you're going to be day trading, because if you go in there with the hard and fast rule that you're right and come hell or high water, it's going to pan out the way you want it or you're going to take nothing. And that's kind of stupid, really, because I mean, you're just giving your money away in opportunities where you could have paid yourself. So I could have taken partials at 15 and tried to see if it could go below here. And I didn't. I elected to go with the full boat of what I entered in here, which was really just one standard lot. I worked with a lower account size. I know you guys saw me working with like 900,000. That was running up some things with my son, showing him the effects of risk management, what happens when you take losses or a string of losses and how much it takes to get it back and the effects of a period of losing trades, which we mocked up as, you know, flip a, flip a quarter. If it was a losing trade, it would be heads. If it was a tails, it would be a winning trade. And we would just go in and push hard on the equity 
when you see big leverage trades, even if it's paper trade, it's hard to really associate yourself with that type of trading, especially if you're new. Most people coming into the business, they're not going to have fifty thousand dollars to trade with, as you know, demo accounts set up with. And most of you probably wouldn't even trade with ten thousand dollars. Okay, I mean, ten thousand dollars is what I use, and it was only a two hundred dollar paper profit. Oh, look at this. You, you, we would expect to see more from you, ICT. Come on, this isn't going to hold my attention. All right. Well, if that's how you think, then just go watch the other guys, because <laughs> you're not going to see them press the button on anything. I want you to think in terms of realistic, okay? Um, if someone learned the skill set of reading price action and they made the, the jump mentally that they want to trade with live funds, they do so on their own. I never tell anybody you're ready to do that. But let's assume that you listening have put the work in, you've been studying, you've been putting your, your efforts into practicing reading price and you've done very well with a demo account and you're consistent with it. At some time in the future, if you decide that you're going to do this with live funds, you don't go in with $10,000. You don't go in with 5000 In fact, you don't even do it with 1000 Do it with smaller than $500 if you can afford to do so. And there are brokers out there that will let you do that. And yes, they're MT4 sometimes. Okay, there's nothing wrong with MT4 if you are the person trading it. Okay, don't don't get wrapped up in all this stuff that's been going around lately. Okay, about how MT4 is a scam. <laughs> you can trade with a broker that uses MT4. Okay, and it's the educators that use MT4 are the problem because everyone knows now that it's easily rigged. It's fake. Okay, so um, that's why you don't see any of those cats on TradingView doing any of their executions because you will see right away, immediately, they have no idea how to trade. Zero, zilch, none. Because if they could, it's real easy to do it here. I don't need to do it with a live account. Now, I'll do it. I'll do it for $75,000, girl, that you can't put in an escrow account. I'll do it. But if you say you're going to pay me and then you can't do it, well, that's kind of deflating. It's not motivational. But for all you educators out there that want to drive around in your cars and pose on Instagram, this is a real easy way of proving you know how to do a trade. Frame it out, execute it, manage it, use a real stop the entire time, and the people following you, they'll have no problem believing that you know how to trade. And if you're teaching, then you have something you can say. I can teach this because look what I can do. And that's all I'm doing here. Because I got lumped in erroneously with a couple people in the past and thinking that I used a rented MT4 server. Okay, so I don't use, I couldn't even tell you how to do that. But I know that people do it. And you've watched examples on this YouTube channel where I've got in and out same day and using some of the things I'm showing you here in this video and I'm doing it with trading view okay trading view is not mt4 I don't know how I could possibly rig this because you can see the little time button down here okay when it's going on and it's the same chart that you're gonna be able to pull up if you pull up euro dollar and you use the forex.com data feed your chart is going to look exactly like this okay in the recording on my other tab here this is what you see in the recording in a couple minutes this is exactly where I got in at on this candle here and I got out on this candle when it poked down here it got my limit and boom there it is it's done all of these things here is what I just outlined in my discussion these vertical lines here are the exact time windows that I told you on this YouTube channel when I taught with the optimal trade entry pattern recognition series that 20 video series it was the 8 30 in the morning to 11 o'clock in the morning time window so if you're looking for a very specific time of day where you want to trade and you you have to set work hours like what's your work schedule well that's pretty easy it's three and a half hours you don't need to be in front of your charts 
all day long, 24 hours a day, you know, Sundays plus Monday through Friday. You don't need to do that. You just know that there are specific time windows and certain days of the week and certain phenomenon and repeating signatures or patterns or setups. It's called that for those outside the mentorship. These things that repeat all the time, they will form between specific times of the day. 8.30 in the morning to 11 o'clock. That's the easy three and a half hours to sit down in front of your charts. If you miss that setup that day, who cares? Go go do whatever you want to do after 11 o'clock. Just don't, don't force it. When you have this idea, it really reduces the likelihood of you over-trading too. Because if you have this delineated on your chart, okay? I only do this on the, on the examples. I don't have this on my charts when I'm trading, okay? I, I do this so you can see it visually how I internalize it on a naked chart because it would look like this while I'm looking at it. I'm not looking at all these other things, these labels and such. That's only for your benefit. It's for your edification when I do it. I don't need these things and it's not a bragging thing. It's not an ego thing. I'm just telling you, I know what I'm looking for and it's 27 years, almost 28 years November 5th. I've been doing the same stuff. So for you seeing me with this lipstick on my charts, it helps you internalize it the same way I am where I don't necessarily have to put it on the charts when I'm doing it. So I want you to take a look at, again, 830 window starts here and 11 here. Price runs up after breaking the market structure on here. It runs right up into this last up close candle right there. So that bearish order block gets tagged here. Now I have this little line right there. Why am I having this annotated? Because I wanted to see if it was going to punch up a little bit more and admittedly because I was trying to do too many things at one time, I knew the likelihood it could trade up into this a little bit higher, but I knew as long as I traded very close to the high end, of this candle here, I'm fine. In fact, anywhere inside this candle going short, I'm fine. Now, why? Because it's a breaker. The high here, any stops that are resting above that, it got rated there. So when price broke down, even though we went through this candle here, it's still a breaker. So all of this erroneous price action I'm willing to discount, not even worry about it. Why? Because it's the wicks. See the bodies of the candles here? It's inside this candle range. So I'm trying to get short worst case scenario there, but I was willing to watch it and see if it could spike up a little bit more. But as I said, you know, I, I got to do it now. And I got in as it was inside this candle. And if you look at the entry price, it's 117, 35, and five pipettes, okay? The high on this candle is 36 and two pipettes. So it's very, very close to the high end of that. So my entry is inside this breaker, so that's fine. And I did not get, and you don't need to get the wick, okay? You don't need to have that. You are going to learn to anticipate that, and it doesn't scare you out of the idea. In other words, when it was a bold-faced bullish candle here, even on this one here, when it was bold-faced bullish, I'm not looking at that thinking, oh my goodness, I'm wrong. No, this is, this is reasonable. This is expected. At least I'm expecting it. Because it can go a little bit deeper and farther up into the body of this candle here, which is a bearish order block. So this bearish order block and bearish breaker, both of them could be utilized for your pattern. But I'm looking at this high down to this low for optimal trade entry. Okay. So you can see I was hopefully trying to get down here. <laughs> I was watching to see if we could get that. And it wasn't likely to, to do that as this late in the day consolidation was forming. So I had to make a move to get up into here. And even then it was showing an unwillingness to get below, below that. So with this target here, below here and anticipating a potential run through that low, my limit order was set for 30 pips. As the day worked longer into the close, it became more apparent that I wasn't gonna get that, so I adjusted and moved my limit order 
to 117, 15, and 5 pipettes. So that's exactly 20 pips. And you, some of you are thinking, oh, 20 pips, big deal. But look at the entry on this candle. I was off by one. And believe me, if I was making my comment section open for trolls to have their fun, they could say, oh, yeah, you missed this. And believe me, I'm already beating myself up because I didn't wait because I otherwise would have hit that candle. I would have done it. And then here's the low exit on here. Okay, so exactly 20 pips. Yeah, it's kind of like five pips more than my minimum. Like I try to at least, if I'm going to scalp, I have to at least be able to bank 15 pips. I have to be able to do that. If I can't, I'm not going to take the trade. Now I can work in 10 pip ranges and build up like seven, eight pips here, six to eight pips, 10 pips here, build that up. And I can make a hundred pips in a day doing that. But it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of work, a lot of focus, and it's just not worth it. But the times in the past where I wanted to show off and let my ego run, I did that kind of stuff. And it's not something that I don't want my students thinking, oh my goodness, that's what I want to do. Because it's it's, it's madness. <laughs> you don't need to do it. But it is a nice way to practice. And you can see how fast, you know, if you have a goal, which is what I teach all of my students to have, is to set a goal of 25 to 30 pips a week net. And if you can do that, and you get to the point where you can manage to have 2% on that, which is a lot for a new trader. I don't think a new trader should have 2% risk on anything, not even in a demo account. But if you can grow to the point of knowing what your setup is and you're comfortable with risk, 25 to 30 pips replaces a job. It absolutely replaces it. And what happens is, the criteria that you use to find that 25 to 30 pips for the week becomes replicated in another trading day. And then all of a sudden you start thinking, wow, I can find it in two trading days per week. And then you strip it down and say, okay, every single trading day has this 8.30 to 11 o'clock in the morning New York session. So there's five hypothetical times of the week that you can find shutups in, in between these time windows. But it also exists between two o'clock and five o'clock in the morning for London open. So that would be trades like over here. So now you have two windows of opportunity per trading day. Asia has a little bit and London close has a little bit. And then you have New York close, which is the least in terms of volatility. And you have to really know what you're looking for. That's why I don't do a whole lot of teaching on it because it will probably get traders in trouble. Whereas London Close can be utilized in certain instances where it could be reversal setups and trade back into the daily range, or they can be continuations of a larger move that's occurring that would otherwise trip people up. And again, that's not for discussion on YouTube, but you can quickly see there's five London sessions, five New York sessions. So that's 10 potential trading opportunities. So at worst case scenario, okay, in terms of trade frequency, you should have no more than, this is optimal trades now, highest order of optimal setups and time of day, no more than 10 trades per week. <gasps> this guy sitting here trying to tell me I shouldn't take more than 10 trades a week. Man, I've been taking 50 trades a week. Okay. How hard are you working for those 50 trades? How much sleep are you losing with those 50 trades? See, I can look at the calendar and I can teach my students to say, okay, we all have these same 10 opportunities now in front of us for the week to come. But then you look at the economic calendar and which one of those days and those time windows have a medium or high impact news event around it? Because that's a smoke screen that the central banks use and they inject volatility there. Sometimes they use it to go in sync with an underlying premise that's noticeable in price action. Other times they mask a reversal of sorts with that news event. And that is narrative. That's something I'm never going to teach on YouTube. But those things, those elements help you formulate 
an approach for a coming week where majority of your focus is going to be on one particular currency, one particular day at one specific time of day, be it London Open or New York Open. Every single one of these setups have the potential to pay out 25 to 30 pips. Now, like today, I didn't get 30 pips. So I would have a deficit of five pips for the week on a Friday. Let's say I didn't do any trades on Thursday or Wednesday or Tuesday or Monday. And this was the only trade that I was able to engage with and it was five pips short. Is that a losing week? To some students of mine coming into this YouTube channel, <laughs> they'll say, yeah, because I was supposed to make 25 to 30 pips. So that means I sucked or they sucked they didn't meet their their goal for the week and i'm here to say that that's not true you actually did very well because if you're aiming for 25 to 30 you have the potential to make 25 to 30 each individual new york or london open trading session that does not mean and i'm not in in any way shape or form trying to entice you to think that you could trade every single day and be profitable every single day because I think I'm above average, and if I do that, invariably I'm going to get stopped out, or I'm going to take a loss at whatever the full risk is. In other words, I may get in the trade; it start may it may start moving in my favor, and I move my stop a little bit to preserve some of uh, the equity that otherwise would have been risked in the trade. In other words, I'm reducing the stop, but it ends up stopping me out for a loss, but not a full initial exposure or it could be a soon i get in it's it stops me out or if it's a limit order and i don't get filled but then it runs without me those are those those are those gremlins if you will that creep in if you try to do everyday trading okay nobody writes books and i'm not going to be the guy to do it either titling it everyday trading because day trading is not something you should try to do every single day there are times when you just simply got to know when not to do it. And my mentorship is seeing that right now. And full disclosure, uh, I've committed to an idea that the dollar was going to go lower and other foreign currencies were going to go higher this week. I committed to that before the week started. But yet I was still able to find trading setups. And I outlined one on Wednesday in the Aussie dollar and again I'm not here to protect my ego because you all wouldn't even know about it because you're here on YouTube but they know they can contrast and balance the the value in understanding that even if you get it wrong it doesn't change anything it just means okay it didn't give me setups with my expected perception of where price should go but you can still find setups and find them with the same tools and concepts that led to an initial analysis that you would otherwise abandon because of something new developing in price. And for someone that's brand new to this channel, it just sounds like, oh, this guy's just talking nonsense. And that's fine. I don't want you to believe anything I say. You go into this channel and you investigate the things I talk about and test it. If you test it, that's the evidence you've been looking for. You don't need me to show you a live trading account because it's the same thing. If I do this with a live account, it's going to be the same price data. It's going to be the same price data. Look at this price action here. Okay. This is Euro on a five minute chart for Forex.com. All right. I'm going to load up another Euro dollar chart. I'm going to use OANDA. Let's look at OANDA's price feed. And we're going to look at it on the same five minute chart. Okay. Now, here's that swing low. It breaks it. Now, notice it says OANDA. That's not Forex.com. Totally different brokerage, totally different data feed, right? You don't ever see him showing you trades he didn't push the button <laughs> you need to push that escrow button girl so here's the low that's broken market structure is broken 
market rallies back up. Here's that, sh that swing high down to that swing low. Isn't this, isn't this the same thing I was looking at? It's still an optimal trade entry, right? This is the candle I entered at that time of day, that time window, that time candle. And I missed the one that made it a little bit higher high. Here's forex.com. And again, Oanda. Let me scrunch up a little bit so it makes it a little bit closer. Is this not doing the same thing? You need me to do this with a live account? Or you can't believe anything? <laughs> see ya. <laughs> see ya. See you later. If that's how you feel, go ahead. See ya. And here's the forex.com with the executions. Okay. And I'll show you. Executions. Off. On. Look right here and right here. There you go. See that? See that right there? So again, if you look at, I don't have multiple accounts too, okay? I, you see these people going, oh yeah, he's got like 16 different demo accounts. No, I have just my trading view account and there's my tag. That's my handle, I-M-I-C-T, all right? And account history, that's the trade here. I use $10,000, hypothetical money. It's 2%. If you do 2% every week, okay, every week, and that's all you do, do you realize that you're doing something that 99.9% .9 of the people in trading aren't doing? Now, let's go back to that hypothetical example of 10 potential trading opportunities per week. And which one fits your schedule? Do you work at that particular time or on that particular day? Or can you watch on your smartphone these potential setups? Because even if you're working, you can set alerts to trade if it gets near this candle's low, drop it down like seven or eight pips. And if it trades up to there, and you'll see me put alerts on in the recording because I have to walk away from the monitors. And if it hit there, I was gonna have to stop whatever I was doing and go back and determine if I was going to take a partial or if I was going to see if it exits there. And then I took the, the alerts back off when I got back to my monitors. And again, you'll see this in recording in a couple minutes. But you can use alerts on TradingView to bring your attention back to the charts. And while I'm not trying to tell you to steal your employer's time and be a poor steward there, I believe it's equivalent to you going to the bathroom at work okay you can excuse yourself from work if your alert goes off as you're walking to the bathroom or restroom you set your trade up and then boom there it is you put your limit order in put your stop order in and just let it do what it's going to do and set your uh, alerts at these thresholds where you would anticipate taking a partial now again that's how i would do it today if i had a job that's how i would do it to continuously learn and develop. I didn't have this when I started back in 1992. So it was a lot harder. And you have a lot of advantages today that we as dinosaurs back in that era, and we wish we would have had. So you should take advantage of that. But if you have these windows of opportunity Every, tra every trading day, Monday through Friday, you should consider studying them, at least in hindsight. And you'll see there's a plethora of setups every single week that offer 25 to 30 pips. Now, if you get one of them per week and you can make 2% gain and then you stop, you don't take another risk. That's it. You're done. Oh, that's foolish, Michael, because you have to really press your edge if you have an edge you got to push it until you get on the drawdown because that's what happens that's what happens when you push a sharp edge in trading you overuse it it dulls it you don't need to be pushing it hard every single day 
you want to look for the most optimal time and day and asset. In this case, we're looking at Forex. So what pair is in alignment with having a medium or high impact news event for that particular day that you anticipate seeing a setup forming? Then if you look at price and you can frame out a idea that, yeah, this is broken market structure, optimal trade entry, it should trade down to here. Even if it doesn't trade down to my target, does it allow me 15 to 20 pips? Yes. And that's what I operated with today. I had this area here also, as you'll see me annotate that as well in the video. And it just went below a little bit on a shallow run. So I had to adjust my limit order. And if you look at where the price is here, the low, that's like threading a needle where I got out at with the spread. Like that's highly, highly precise. I just wish we would have had a little bit more movement on the downside. But if you look at the other parent currency pairs, you know, today it was kind of sloppy. But this right here, I'm not going to take away from the, the London setup, which I was not awake. I was sleeping all through here. But I missed my deadline for a YouTube video yesterday. And I felt that an execution would make up for that because I wasn't going to do an execution discussion yesterday. I just wasn't going to do it. I was just going to talk about the effects of forcing over trading and i kind of used that idea and segued into this together and blended the two so i hope you can appreciate that um, and again you can see this is a button being pushed here and here but on a limit okay a limit was hit here so i'm not trying to uh tell you something i did or works hypothetically i execute on it and it's something that you learn right here on this YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you anything but the time to watch it. And yes, I talk a lot. I do. I talk a lot because I love what I do. I'm passionate about it. But the people that listen to me, they want me to talk. Because that's where all that knowledge comes from. How you should be thinking about what you're doing. Because you think it's just clicking a button watching the money come into your account. You think that's all this is when you first start. All you have to do is figure out if I'm a buyer or seller today. That's it, that's all you gotta do, right? And why is it that you are all failing? Why can't you see these setups? Why can't you do it? Because they're right here in these videos for free. You're not practicing and you're not believing the criteria and framework that I'm teaching conceptually and you're not going into the price action and finding. Listen folks, listen, okay? It's a little bit of a woodshed moment. Because these are the times where people get irritated with me and you turn me off. Oh, this guy's arrogant. Yeah, whatever. He's not even trading with a live account. I'm not listening to this goober. Listen, folks. Every single week, I prove these things. And I don't just talk about something. I'm giving you an example. Period. I execute on the basis of what I teach in this YouTube video. And all the series and video collection that's on this YouTube channel. But if you don't put the work in, that means practicing. I don't care how good you think you should be, you're not gonna have a shred of prowess or ability or skill until you at least suspend your suspicions, okay? Forget all the nonsense you've heard about me, okay? Because if you look hard enough on the internet, you're gonna find I probably microwaved puppies, okay? I probably, you know, steel hubcaps. <laughs> There's all kinds of things out there being said about me because it's just what people are doing. If anybody is out here doing something good, and listen, you don't ever have to buy my mentorship. You don't ever have to pay me a penny. You don't have to do anything but just watch these videos that cost you nothing but your time. But if you don't practice the things I share for free here. You're not going to see that I'm not lying to you at all. I've been telling you the truth since 2010. It's the same stuff I talked about when I was on America Online in 1994. Same stuff. Same things. And it's been working since then. It hasn't changed. They're not going to change the algorithm. 
Because if I believed that that was even going to happen or have any impact, I never would have taught it. Seriously, I never would have done it. These things are set in stone because of the volume between the counterparties that are making price what it is. It's simple as that. It's smart money and large fund trading. That's it. That's all there is, folks. There's transactional flows that come in. Okay, 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 big deal. Commerce comes in. Okay, big deal. That's getting pushed in, in the mix. That's not facilitating the delivery of price higher or lower or where it's going in the grand scheme of things. It's just being pushed through. And retail is just lumped in there, but it's on such a small, itty bitty, tiny little scale. It's insignificant. So all the retail traders out there, all you Instagram traders out there <laughs> that are pushing this narrative, ICT is going to cause the Forex market to stop working because he's sharing the algorithm. Uh, that's not going to happen. And it's not because there's a lack of an algorithm. It just means that we aren't even big enough to be a blip on the screen. Think about it. It's insane to even think that the systems and structures that are in place that make these markets price in how they price in we collectively are never going to be a juggernaut to change that think about how many people come to this youtube channel and think about how many people have already turned this video off <laughs> believe me it's a this information it's been on my youtube channel for years for years man years Market Maker series I put out in 2014. Okay? No, it's not on my YouTube channel. And no, you don't need it. The idea of pushing this narrative that I'm not teaching you something that's real. Okay? I have seen real pushback. Okay? There are people, and it's not these goobers that are on Instagram that are trying to hide that they learned from me and they're renaming my stuff. Because if they can discredit me or say I learned it through Wyckoff, which I already just debunked and destroyed that, or I learned it from this one or that one. I didn't learn this from Chris Laurie. Chris Laurie doesn't know this stuff. Okay? He doesn't know it. And that's not disrespect to him. It's just he doesn't know it. You don't get this information anywhere else. You don't get it from Steve Morrow either. Because Steve Morrow uses my 1996. Think about this now. 1996, I was doing lectures on the whole delivery of London Open. All of that making the high of the day. Okay, I didn't call it M's and W's. I called it one, two, three tops and one, two, three bottoms. Why? Why did I call it that? Because I was a new trader and I'm using terms that everybody back then was aware of because of Ken Roberts pushing one, two, three tops and bottoms. It made sense. Everyone knew what I was talking about. So I didn't have to create a language. But as I got deeper in understanding how these markets deliver, I had to create a language. So therefore, my students, which were intended to be only my, my sons, I wanted them to understand what it was that was occurring. So that's why these names were formed. It wasn't me renaming something that existed somewhere else because they don't exist anywhere else. Now, you're seeing all kinds of wonderful revampings. <laughs> and I mean that with my tongue in cheek. That everybody's renaming. But Steve Morrow was not my teacher. Mm -mm. Sorry. And all you folks around the world that have the beat the market maker system stuff, all those indicators, TDI, mayonnaise water <laughs> all that stuff was lipstick added to just the simple generic idea of how the daily profile is painted for a daily range that's it and it's funny to look at that stuff and hear hear how i talk and talked in 1996 finding its way in all that stuff and you still don't see any executions from morrow you don't see any executions ever. You just see screenshots with an entry as it's moving in the direction of the trade. My entries are always opposed 
to where I think the market's going to go. That's smart money. I'm not chasing price. And that's how I recognize it initially because I was only buying strength and selling weakness at the time. That's what I was teaching in 1996. I did not teach the Judas swings. That was what I was holding back with my groups then. I wanted those entries for myself. And yes, you can say I was holding back then and that was true. I'm admitting to it now. So all this stuff you see out here, market maker this and market maker that, all that stuff that came after me. And all you guys that don't like it can choke on it because that's the truth. You can't find it. I put a bounty out. It's out there still. $100,000. You can find any of my content, any of it in print, in video, anything prior to 1996 because, folks, it just simply doesn't exist. So you can listen to me say all this stuff and get mad and disgusted. Oh, he's arrogant. Or you can say, you know what? Maybe he's telling the truth. I'm going to go in and look at what he's teaching on this YouTube channel, and I'm going to put it to the test. Let me tell you something. The people that really do that and really have an intent to learn how to do it, they're converted. And you're never going to convince them that what they have been shown with their own studies using this information, you'll never convince them that they've wasted their time or even entice them to do anything else. See, that's the difference between my group. And that's why everyone else on the outside that are weak-minded, losing traders, okay? They always say that I'm a cult leader and this is a cult. Well, guess what? If winning's a cult, I want to be a part of that. And if you want to make me the leader of that group, <laughs> I'll take that title. I love it. I love winning. So if you want to be a part of a community that really appreciates one another, we have a high regard for one another, and we have a high regard for the concepts that I teach. You found your home here. All you have to do is warm up to a new video every week. I might be late like I was yesterday. I may only put out one that particular week. Okay, because I'm not obligated. I'm not obligated to this, this group of, uh, of traders that are watching these videos. I'm obligated to mentorship. I don't miss those windows. But here, I'm only going to be able to put it out there when I have free time. And I'm not always going to have a whole lot of time. And then as we go into the new year, I'm going to have less free time. So I'm not going to be as often. I may not do two videos that week. I may not do for an entire month more than one or two videos. I may not be able to do any. That might happen. It doesn't mean I've abandoned my YouTube channel. I love doing this. But I may not be able to do it as frequently or as exactly as the time I was aiming for. Okay, so I say all this stuff to kind of keep you motivated because, listen, folks, I know times are really hard right now. They're hard. You, you maybe have lost your job. Maybe you have blown all of your savings. And you think that this is going to be the answer to your problem. And I'm going to tell you something. And I want you to really hear me here. If that's what you think, I'm going to tell you the honest to God truth right now. Even if you were in your position to, to join my mentorship, okay, you're not going to make money simply because you joined the mentorship right away. That's not how this works. Just the same as you're not going to make money watching my YouTube videos here right away because you finished watching them. This stuff takes a lot of work. And don't be tricked into thinking that you may have a high regard for me right away watching some of these videos. If, if you've continued with listening to this one, you probably have a little bit more respect than some of the folks that have, that have crossed paths with me in the past. They think I'm talking too much and I like to sound in my own voice and all this stuff can be reduced down to a five minute video and it can't. Because what I'm trying to show you is I'm real and I am practical. I'm not out here telling you that you're going to get rich quick. I'm telling you that this stuff's going to require you to bust your ass. And it's not easy. 
It is absolutely not easy. And joining mentorship doesn't make it easier. In fact, you have more work because I'm not going to sit down with you and say, we're going to buy here. We're going to put a stop here and we're going to take our targets there because that's what some of you are expecting. And I'm telling you right now, if that's what you thought when you sent your email, just send another email and say, I'm not interested (laughs) because that's going to be the equivalent because you don't want to be surprised when you find out that that's not how I do it. Just like this YouTube video series that you see me put up with the Optimal Trade Entry, I'm showing you conceptually. Mentorship is just me pointing to where it's likely to go. And if it doesn't do that, what's the catalyst that changes that to be an untrue statement and anticipate something opposite happening? Now, I don't all the time do that because I like to be on one side of the marketplace and commit to just that. I'm either right or I'm wrong. It's just, I like to be black and white with it. I don't want it to be ambiguous. I don't want anybody to misinterpret what I'm doing or and what I'm thinking. My students know when I'm right. My students know when I'm wrong. And I'm right more times than I'm wrong. That is not me telling you hand-holding, buy here, guys. We're going to sell short here, guys. Put your stop here. We outline openly what the market may look to do. And you learn how to use all those concepts and things that you've been exposed to. And some of them are from this YouTube channel. Not all of them, but some of them. But I cover all that stuff and I say, okay, we're bullish till we get to here. Or we're bearish until we get to here. Or it may move to this area that may set up a setup that leads to a delivery to another target. And that's not signal services. That's not what a lot of people wanted when they first came in in August of 2016. Everybody thought that I'm going to be putting out trades like that. And I started right away. I'm not doing that. I'm teaching you how to, number one, get yourself out of the way. Because every single one of you, regardless of where you are at in your development, you are holding yourself back. You are. I was holding myself back in the beginning, and you're doing it too. You just don't realize what you're doing is impeding your development. Some of you are trying to force yourself into day trading when you're not really fit to do that model. You're probably better short-term trading or swing trading. But you're not going to know that, and I surely ain't going to know it. No mentor is going to know that. Okay, it's something that's personal, it's internal. You're gonna know what you feel comfortable doing. And day trading, while it gives you lots of examples and practicing theory and price delivery, it may not be your duration of choice. And you don't know what that choice is going to be. Your personality determines that. And no mentor or educator can force you into that. No one can. Because I tried that with every educator in the book over my first five years or so and honestly it was always detrimental i tried to be larry williams 2.0 it didn't work for me i did everything his books and his courses said i did everything and it did not work for me it didn't work i'm not saying that his concepts don't work i'm saying that i could not make that work for me So am I surprised when people come to my YouTube channel and they watch one video or they watch one series one time, they don't apply it, they think that's uh, not going to work for me or this is complicated or this is boring like this video probably seems to some of you. But if you're new and it feels boring to you, that's just your infancy and that's not me being arrogant saying you're stupid, that's just me saying you have not been involved in this long enough to know what it is that you need to be learning or how your mindset should be because that's going to be a deterrent to you getting to where you think you should be in terms of quote unquote success think what you came to this youtube channel with a preconceived notion that i already know what i should know in terms of buying and selling i just need you to show me where (laughs) what that's basically encapsulating exactly what everybody has in terms of expectations, not just with me, but every other mentor out there, educator, teacher, guru. If we were all in a a big group setting, gurus anonymous, (laughs) you know, and you know, what 
do we have to contend with more than anything? It's unreasonable expectations by patrons, customers, students, viewers. You think you should know this or that. And since you know that that's what you think you only need to make it all work, when the teacher doesn't place it right in your hand, then that method or that teacher is incapable of teaching what it is that you need to know. When I've been here longer than most of these guys have been alive, and I know because I've done this, I can do it and I can transfer the information. But I've also been upfront in the beginning saying, you're not gonna learn this real quick. You're not going to do the things I'm doing like that. And you hear these guys, oh yeah, I watched the videos and I learned ICT stuff in three months. No, you didn't. You learned something that made sense to you, that you gravitated to, but you're not consistently delivering with whatever it is you think you grasped. You're still wrestling with things and that's the part you're hiding from yourself and you won't share with people in, pu in the public forums. I know, I did the same stuff. I pretended to be better than I was when I was on America Online. That was me coping with me failing miserably. That was back in 1994. <laughs> Yeah, I was teaching before I should have been teaching. Okay, I was only teaching when I had the right side. Okay, when the market was going up in my favor, because that's all I was doing back then was buying. Yeah, I was teaching then. And people were like, oh, this is great. And that made me feel good. I got a hit of dopamine. And I got addicted to that. Therefore, I had to do that every single day. And that was hard to do. It was real hard to do. Over time, I learned how to actually trade. I learned how the markets actually book and how they deliver price. And you learn a lot of that stuff here. Everything that's in this chart here is explained to you somewhere on this YouTube channel. In some uh, video or some course series, some area, I've talked about it. And for those hardcore students here that have a very good note-taking regimen, you know where those places are. Some of my students have exactly the minute marker in what video, which is astonishing because I don't even have that. There are limitations to your development that you're going to place on yourself. And you're also going to put too many things in terms of expectations that are unrealistic. You're going to place that on yourself also. And you got to find a happy medium. So how do you find the happy medium? You have 10 opportunities per week that are optimal. You have five London sessions and five New York sessions. Between two o'clock in the morning Eastern time to five o'clock in the morning Eastern time, that's your London session, okay? Very simple window of opportunity. Your New York session is 8.30 to 11. They're not the specific ICT London open kill zones and it's not the specific ICT New York open kill zones. These are just a little bit broader. They're more forgiving in terms of finding the setups. It gives you a little bit more room, but there are specific elements of time that are much more narrow than that. And even so that I haven't taught yet, even in mentorship yet. And that's algorithmic theory, which it's not required to find profitability, but mentorship is for freaks. People that want to just be unbelievable, like it just it's too good to be true type results. That's what mentorship is. What your analysis concept is refined to that level and that degree, it's unrivaled. And you guys watch these videos here on YouTube and you think it's blowing your socks off. There's things I haven't even taught yet that are just phenomenal. They're just, <laughs> they're just too good. <laughs> they're too good. And until you see it, it's, it's things of only dreams and make-believe. And that's why you get a lot of hate when you're able to say that you can do these things. And then when you start bringing the receipts and showing that you can do it, they'll find 15 other things to justify why they don't want to accept it. So that's what you have here. Are you the person that listens to me and says, you talk too much, Michael. I can't take you anymore. I got to turn this video off. I'm telling you, if you're listening up to this point right here, 
you're never going to get it. Not from me, you're not. You're not going to get what it is that you think you should have gotten because the things that you're turning away from is the very thing that you need to get over the hump. And you're not prepared to hear that. Just like I wasn't prepared to hear that. If someone would have told me this initially, even back when I was having success initially on luck back in the 90s as a commodity trader, and I'd do everything that the books were saying to buy and everything was oversold and the markets were going to go up regardless of what I did, I attributed that as skill. And it was not skill. It was blind luck. If you would have told me that the things I teach on this YouTube channel for free and I say that these are the big heavy hitters in this series or this video. This is the thing that matters most. It's not the willy-nilly pattern. It's not the order block or optimal trade entry. Tell me which one to do. Which one's a breaker? <laughs> That's the small stuff. You're sweating the small stuff. And I was looking for the optimal indicator settings back then. That's what I thought was the secret. And the secret is, where's the market drawing to? Why should it drop? Why should it? Not what's the setting I should have on my RSI and stochastic. Is my MACD confirming the RSI and stochastic or is it in disagreement? Those were my filters. And I was worried more about that. And the price is telling me what I needed to do. And I wasn't watching any of that. I'm looking at those three indicators at the bottom of my screen. And I don't have those indicators on my screen anymore. So I'm not surprised when I'm wrong. I can see I'm wrong. I need to make adjustments or get out. Or don't take a trade in my preconceived ideas about being bullish or bearish. I have to sit on my hands. Or as we are right now, I think we're in a heightened area of risk. So therefore, I must sit on my hands regardless of what I see in price. And I wrestled with doing this video today because I told my mentorship on Wednesday this is the reason why I'm not going to do any trades. I'm not going to do any executions until the week after the election. Because I don't want you feeling like you should be doing it too. Because my students sometimes get overzealous and they go in and they trade with live funds. And I don't want my students to do that. Because if you're still learning how to fly a jet plane, then you have no business being in there flying solo in a real jet plane. If you're in medical school learning how to be a surgeon, you have no business playing with a scalpel on a cadaver. You have no idea what you're doing. So everything has a time and place. And all of you, God bless you for your enthusiasm because I know what it's like. I remember how it was for me. But the best piece of advice you're ever going to get is to be patient. You want trading and being able to find the setups to be absolutely boring. You want it to be so boring that you already know before you turn the chart on, you know what's likely to paint in these bars and candlesticks before it forms. Then and only then would you have permission to go into live trading. Because if it ain't boring for you to find setups routinely a couple times a week, you're not ready for live trading. You're not. And I don't care who tells you otherwise, you're not. And that's the reason why all these other guys out here aren't even showing you executions on TradingView because they're not consistent. They don't know how to trade and they can only talk about it in hindsight or show you fake MT4 withdrawals and screenshots. That's all keyed in trades after the fact. You can't fake what I'm about to show you. They're real executions. And I'm being upfront and honest and transparent. It's a paper trade because of regulations. I am not licensed to give trade advice. There's no regulation on paper trades because I've already told you, you it's not the same. It's not equivalent. If I said paper trading is the same thing as live trading. No, there's a distinction between what I say. I say the price delivery and the patterns we're looking for in studying with a paper trading mindset. There's no difference between that and what you look at in terms of live feed or live account trading. That price is the same price within reason a couple pips or so in terms of the spread, but the same thing's happening in a live feed. 
So if I don't have an understanding of what price is going to do in a paper trading account on TradingView, I sure as hell wouldn't be able to do it with a live account, right? So I leave my audience with that conundrum. You have to wrestle with that. If you don't want to believe me because I'm not showing you deposits into a bank account from a trading account, or I'm not showing you $100,000 cars, okay, or million-dollar homes, or $65,000 watches, or vacation properties that I actually really own. If you're not believing anything because of those things, then you have your expectations misaligned. Because I only promise that you're going to learn how to read price better than anyone else can teach you and forecast price movements more accurately than you could ever imagine and do it consistently. But you're going to have to work your ass off. It's going to come with a lot of work. It's going to come with a lot more work than you think it's going to take. And you're going to want to quit dozens of times. And only the strong survive here. Period. But the ones that put the work in, that get it, they get it. Because once you know, you know. Nothing can detract you from that. Once you have it, once you see it, once you really live it, there ain't a person out there that's going to convince you to do anything else but what we do. Because what we do is the truth. And there's no denying it. Look at this chart, folks. Seriously, it's only 20 pips. I know. It's 20 pips. But I can tell you there was a time where I looked at charts and this was a unicorn to me. There was no way I was going to capture this talent, this skill, to see the actual turning points and the majority of the move Come on, come on. How many examples do you need to see of this? Because I'm going to keep doing it. But how many do you need to see with this, with this medium trading view? It's not MT4. There's no way I can funny game it. I can't finagle it. I can't key in orders. Everything happens as it happens on the screen. Ask your guru to do the same thing. Ask your educators to do this. They're not going to because they can't. You're going to see that their trade entries are going to be way off. They'll be chasing price or it'll go against them 15, 20 pips before it eventually turns around. And they'll get out way before they should. Or they won't even have a stop loss movement as it should be managed properly. They don't know how to trade, folks. And that's the bottom line. There's no other reason for it. None. No other reason for it not to happen. Period. So hopefully you got a little bit of understanding about what makes day trading in its three components, day trading the daily range or the maximum part of the daily range, swing trading intraday and scalping because there's three different schools of thought with that, at least under my tutelage. And I've given you examples of that today. So now let's take a look at the video and until I talk to you next time, I wish you good luck and good trading.